express yourself, say whatever you need. Um, if you click on the participants, you get the list of people who are actually on the event itself. Um, you guys can't see this on the recording, that recording right now, um, but we, next time you come to this event, you'll see it. Um, and then, then there's Q&A. Uh, when you click on Q&A, you can actually enter your question. Um, so please enter your questions in here, and then um, we'll then, uh, answer them. But you can also vote on them too. So uh, the best question that gets voted on the top reaches the top, and then Yael can then uh, go and answer them. Um, other than that, that is pretty much it. Very simple. Uh, yeah. Cool. Will I share my screen there, so? Yeah. Go ahead. Click on share screen. All right. Can you guys see that? Can you see the? Um... Yes, indeed. All right. Perfect. So let's jump in. Um, so look, to be very honest, this presentation, like the slide deck is a little bit basic. I probably prefer to just actually show you and do the stuff rather than spending too much time and getting a fancy uh, deck. Um, so if I, let's hope to skyrocket your organic traffic with me. Um, so it's pronounced Mihal Brennan, just in case you're wondering. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. Okay, so I'm going to jump straight in. So a little quick bit about who I am. So owner of smbclicks.com, and I just realized <laughs> I misspelled my own name. Um, smbclix.com, name, name is changing soon anyway. So uh, I've got about 10 years of experience in search marketing. Um, I'm an SEO all owner, so like technical content, keyword research, strategy, everything, link building, and, and everything else in between. Um, I've built and scaled content marketing teams that have added millions of organic visitors to websites across various industries. Usually work with companies with revenue varying from about a million up to about 40 million. And uh, I've got a lot of experience with SaaS companies particularly as well as really good experience with local and national businesses. Um, so what are we going to cover today? Um, we're going to do four different things, okay? So we're going to talk about image SEO. Um, particularly how I rank myself on Google as the most handsome man in Ireland and the practical ways you can use it to drive traffic to your business. Uh, we're going to talk about keyword research on steroids, so how to hack your competitors' content strategies to choose the right content that will drive traffic to your website. Uh, we're going to talk about content auditing, what it is, why it's important, and how you can use it to grow your traffic. And we're going to talk about link building. So again, we're going to look at how we can hack your competitors' links to drive authority to your site with external links. And we're also going to look at how to use internal links to increase relevancy and boost your traffic even further. Okay. Um, so we're going to jump straight into the image SEO. So if you Google this term, most handsome man in Ireland, this is what you're going to see. Okay. Um, my name is going to come up. My image is going to come up. Um, it'll also come up for a lot of other things as well, like best looking man in Ireland, best looking guy in Ireland, that kind of stuff. So it's um, it's a funny one. It's it's a great one to have in a pub if you're in an argument or whatever. Like you know, <laughs> my wife is is uh, is a good looking girl. A lot of time I get um, looks as in how how you, how do you, how did you get that girl? And I just pull out the phone and show them the most handsome man in Ireland, and they kind of have to shut the fuck up, really. Um, it wasn't an original idea. Um. It was so I got it from a couple of other guys. So this guy James Dooley, who's another SEO, ranked himself as the hottest girl in Manchester. And this guy, uh, Dino Gomez, ranked himself as the hottest guy in San Diego. So I saw this and started to look at what they did, thought it was funny. Um, but realized none of them did it for like a whole country. Um, Ireland is a pretty small place, and you know, I just had a feeling that I'd be able to do it, you know, relatively easily because I don't think a lot of people would be looking for it. And like I said, it's a good party piece. Um, when I did it, actually, so if anyone in here or anyone watching is like from coming from an agency perspective, it's it's a good thing to do. So when I did this, I shared it on LinkedIn and got a huge amount of um, coverage. Like I got about two two hundred thousand views, a couple of couple of thousand likes, a couple of thousand comments, and stuff like that. I got a couple of good clients out of it as well. So. If anyone here is coming from an agency background, you know, and obviously not from Ireland or from a different city or a different country, it uh, it's a good tactic to use and it's good social proof as well when you're in a meeting and trying to close a client to say, you know, how how uh, how do I know you're going to be able to do what I can, what you say you can do? It's a good one to just say Google this term. Um, so we're going to jump straight in and talk about how we actually did it, right? So how to rank an image on Google. So there's a couple of things to take into account. Um. First of all, there needs to be images in the search results already, okay? You need to have the keyword in the save file name. You need to have the keyword in the alt text. The image needs to be near text about what you're trying to rank for. 
Um, and then you can pretty much drive authority to it with links, whether both in, external or internal. So if you search on YouTube for how to rank images in Google search. So basically, I do have a video going through this. Um, so like if this kind of moves a little bit too fast or anything like that, um, just, just Google this. So just look on YouTube for how to rank images in Google search. This video will show up. You can go through this and it's uh, the whole the whole process step by step again, just in case that um, I, I go through a little bit too fast today. OK, so bring it back to the different steps. The first ones that you need to do uh, or the first thing you need to look at is you need to look at is there an image snippet in the search results? So um, just a little note for myself here to show you guys. So what you'll do if you've got a keyword, You'll go to Google and you will go and see is there images showing up already for your particular keyword, right? So if I was looking to rank an image for Nike Air Max trainers, um, I'd, I'd Google it and I would see, hey, look, this has got the image sip, snippet. So this is a good one to, to try and optimize for. Like if you were to do it for um something that doesn't have the results so let's say for example um places to visit in toronto so well these look like images here they're actually site links to specific sites so um this one wouldn't be a good example to, to rank for so if i had an attraction in toronto and i was trying to rank for it using the image um using the image strategy wouldn't be a good strategy but bringing back like let's say i had an e-commerce store um it would be a good opportunity then okay so i'm just going to jump down right so that's your first step you're going to look to see Leon, is there quick images question, already may. pardon quick question if i may yeah for what uh can you see like can you see the q a and like the and the chat and everything by the way or is that uh and uh, not what i'm sharing no okay there... got it got it all good, all good. No, I just because I I did make a question of if this works especially well with with looks or like is everyone else is, is everyone just trying to be like the most handsome man or like the most charming person? But it makes perfect sense now because apparently it has to kind of those are already kind of triggering queries, right? Where like you're going to yeah. end up with the the images in there. Yeah. So like, let's say you've done your keyword research and you you say actually I want to do this. Um, like w one of the first steps you want to do is go and look is are these image snippets um showing up for for that particular keyword? If they're not, then you'll just skip it. You know, you're you're looking for the ones where the image already put, comes up because you're not going to push an image into the search results really. Um, like you know, in, in the case where the the images show up, that's because people are actually looking specifically for images in there, and it makes sense for Google to show them. You know, does that make sense? Perfect sense. I love it. Awesome. Cool. So the next thing that you want to do is um, your on page stuff. Okay. So what you need to do is get the keyword in the file name. Um, am I still sharing my screen here? Yeah. You can still see that. Yep. Looks good. Cool. All right. So you want to get the keyword in the file name, right? Um, so like I've got a little bit of a, an image of, of some code here and you can, can't really see it, but this is actually pretty simple. So what you would do is um, let's say, for example, so this is an image of my, um, two-year-old um acting just just messing around my, my wife took that yesterday the day before so let's say i wanted to rank him for uh the coolest kid in ireland okay what i would do is i would change the name of the file to uh include the the keyword so aaron brennan so no when I upload that photo, it's going to, you know, WordPress is going to put that piece of um, text into the into the uh, into the code. So, like you'll see here, or maybe you can't. It might be a little bit too small, but the upload includes the the text there. Okay. The second thing that I need to do then is the image alt text. So, just to give you an example here, um, on on the specific one where I've ranked for um most handsome man in Ireland, this image here, the alternative text for that is the best looking Irish man, Michal Brennan. Um, I also added a caption here as well just to see see whether it worked or not. But basically what you'll do is when you've got your, you know, when you've uploaded your image, you'll add alternative text within it. Like, you know, and most most platforms, most website platforms will have the opportunity to add alternative text. So whether it's like WordPress, Wix, you know, Weebly, Squarespace, any of those guys, you'll just put that in there then as well, okay? Um then the next thing that you want to do is put the image near text that you actually want to rank for. OK, so when you go and look at the um, bear with me. 
So when you Google most handsome man in Ireland, this is what shows up. But this is from this piece of content, okay? So those images and this, my name here is being pulled from this piece of content. And what I've done is I've got the images surrounded by the type of text that I want to rank for. So you've got a heading here, handsome Irish men. If you look within here, I'm talking about, you know, handsome Irish man, that I'm a handsome Irish man and so on and so forth, who is the most handsome man in Ireland. So you've put your image near um, text that you want to rank for. And that's pretty much as simple as it is, okay? The last step then is, um, driving authority to the to the piece of content by by link building now you can do this with internal links or external links it it, it doesn't really matter but it well it doesn't matter for the most part but it will depend on how authoritative your site is and i suppose how authoritative sites other sites are okay but in this case what i did was i created this piece of content i waited about three weeks and the piece of content wasn't even indexed by google so in other words google came and crawled my site but it didn't even find the piece of content so what i did was i added two internal links one from the the menu and then also added a second one in the um in the footer now the reason i did this is because when you're adding internal links two of the places that are pretty important for adding links are the menu and the footer the footer because the footer is on every page and it's going to be um linking to the same page so if you've got a link in the footer you've got a link from every page on your website and so in other words every page on your website is driving authority to, to the specific page same story with the with the menu when google comes on to your website it's going to crawl your menu first it's going to look at the page that are in there first and by putting this in here I basically told Google, this is an important page on my site, you know, push the authority on my site to this. And when I did this, within a couple of weeks, it was indexed and then it was actually ranking on page one. So it took about two or three months overall. Now, like, like I said, I'm from Ireland, it's a small country, there's about six million people on the island. There isn't a lot of SEO talent here, so there isn't a lot of people that I'm competing with. Um so I didn't really need to do a whole lot more in terms of link building. You could share it on some image sharing sites like the likes of Flickr or, or some of those other guys. Um, but for the most part, I had enough authority in my site to do that. You could also um, just build links from other sites to it. Now push it, push authority to it and would actually push it up in the rankings as well. Um, so just to kind of quickly go through some of the practical uses for it. So um one of the practical uses would be if you've got a piece of blog content that you want to drive traffic to where images are relevant um so to give you an example here if you google the keyword color combinations um you'll see this result okay and i used to actually work at a company called design wizard and we created this piece of content and um on the back of what i done with the handsome man experiment and um, we decided that we were going to really optimize all of the images within this um, piece of content so when you google color combinations you see that the images show up here but you'll also see if you just look at what happens when i hover you'll see there's an address comes up and you'll see that that google is pulling the images from our piece of content and displaying it in the very first image that's there so the very first thing that can be clicked on on this page is an image that can drive traffic to my blog content this one isn't one of the ones from design wizard but this one is as well so out of you know four images that are displayed at the very top of the page two of them are from a site that i've worked on that i've that i've done these exact steps you know so i suppose you know it's, it's funny to rank yourself as the most handsome man in Ireland, but like there is practical uses where when you create a piece of content that um you know that you want to drive traffic with you can use the image um optimization to actually get to the top of the page and get onto page one when especially when you might be competing with other um pieces of content that are from websites that are a lot more authoritative you know um second one then for example would be for stuff like e-commerce stores so e-commerce stores where you're competing with like bigger um bigger sites uh bigger more tower sites so if, if you had like a niche um website and a niche e-commerce store that sold nike air max trainers um you're going to find it fairly hard to compete with the likes of the nike website um you're going to actually sorry just to translate for any americans so like trainers or sneakers um but yeah so if i wanted to rank on page one for this i'm going up against some pretty pretty strong sites like you know so nike is um obviously the most the strongest one shoe would be a pretty well-known brand jd sports would be a well-known brand um in ireland and the uk 
as with Sports Direct and some of these other guys. Okay, so if I've got a small niche store, I'm probably not going to be able to get into these results because I won't have enough authority on the site. Um, but I can push myself into the images, you know. So when you look at what happens when I hover here, um, you will see that one of the the first one here is from Sports Direct. The second one is from Sports Direct. That's a really big site. That would be like um almost it'd be like the equivalent of like an e-commerce maybe like a dick sporting goods in the states um but like really big over here but then when you look at these second two so you've got fashion beans and food asylum they wouldn't be as well-known websites so these guys um are not as authoritative sites but they're ranking above the likes of nike and above the likes of jd sports and sports direct in the images so they're driving traffic you'd see here they're actually not even on the first page but they are because of the image, you know. So, excuse me, if you've got like an e-commerce store, that you're trying to drive um, people to your products. This is a great uh, strategy to use. Uh, I'm just going to jump in here and see if there's any Q&A. Uh, do make link to page or use image on link page. Do make link to page or use image on link page. Uh, um, would you be able to come back to me with that, William? So just to explain a little bit better because i'm not i don't understand 100 percent. so do you make link to page or use image on link page yeah i'd say if you can just ping me there um with a little bit more detail and i'll, I'll come back to that one okay i'm wondering as well what exactly that means yeah cool so yeah if you will if you just give me a small more detail and i'll come back right um so just to carry on so so that that right now you, know, you, said you can have a bit of a laugh with it like you know you can rank your partner rank your kids do whatever you want but like there is real practical business uses for it um and it can be used to like really grow your traffic because like when you look at you know stuff like this you'll see the click throughs up here are going to be really really high um and and that's you know really um that's going to be a really good thing for your site like you know the other thing as well as if the click through is is high and if you're driving traffic to the site via here you'll also find that your results will start to or like your actual piece of content or your product page will start to move up these rankings as well okay um so that's the practical uses right so i'm going to go from here into um I suppose slightly more heavier stuff but like this could be this could be used to literally build an entire brand build an entire product like grow an entire company from right so i've called a keyword research on on steroids i'm going to demo the process okay um so this works really well for national and international companies it works best if you've got a bigger competitor and you're a smaller player or sometimes you'll see that the biggest company isn't really good at content marketing, but a smaller player is. So let's say the bigger competitor um, wants to get better at their at their content marketing, at their SEO and drive more organic traffic. They can look at the, the guys who would be considered smaller companies, but the ones that have got all the traffic, you know. Um, it's still worth doing anyway. So even if you're not like a bigger or if you're not a smaller player and you don't have a bigger competitor, it's still worth doing to look at other sites, see what's driving traffic to, to your competitors and, and similar sites within your niche. Um, it can be used for keyword research across all page types. So whether you're looking to create service pages, product pages, blog posts, etc., it, it, it doesn't really matter. You can use this to literally um, build out an entire content plan. And when I say content, I'm not just talking about blogs. I'm literally talking about pages on sites, depending on the type that they are. You know, So it could be anything from like a product page to a blog to a service page. It doesn't have to be. A, when I say content, I don't necessarily mean blog. Um, it doesn't always need to be done for competitors. It can be used across all types of sites that you have content you want to rank for. So as an example, let's say you had a product that was a multivitamin. Um, you might find that a lot of your competitors are are not good at internet marketing and they're not really um, they're not really focusing on it because they sell their product directly from stores. So you mightn't have a lot to look at in terms of competitors, but what you could do would be look at, at keywords that your um that you're that you'd want to rank for, look at the results of those guys, and then reverse engineer some of the sites that are um that are showing up for it. So for example, like I said, if you had a multivitamin product and you wanted to show up for what are the best multivitamins to take for men, um, you might Google that and find that sites like WebMD and Healthline and like other kind of sites that aren't necessarily competitors are ranking for it. But then you could go in and reverse engineer those sites to see what other content they're ranking for and pull all of the stuff from there and then you know start to create your own versions that you could rank yourself okay i'm just going to take a quick drink bear with me all right so i'm going to jump in and actually do this um in the example i'm going to use canva 
um because it's it's a you know relatively well known um tool uh really good product in terms of like um internet traffic and stuff like that um like you know they've they've built their they've built their traffic massively over the years um and they've done it cleverly so you know if i had a graphic design software um like I, I think one of the guys that's in the the ten x group is um CEO of Easily. He's an Irish guy, but like so, let's say it was him, and I was looking to take on Canva in terms of their um, organic traffic. Um, so what I would do is I would f- use this tool called Ahrefs. Now, so this is a bit of a debate as to what this is called, whether it's Ahrefs, Hrefs, Arefs, whatever. Right, but it, it's a great tool. If you don't have it, you can sign up for like a seven day trial for seven dollars. You know, if you're not planning on using it long term, I think it's ninety nine dollars a month. Um, but if you're not planning on using it long term, the seven dollar trial you can get a lot done within that seven seven days. Okay, so what you'll do is you're going to come in here to the um to the site explorer and you're going to put there your your competitor's URL in here and you're going to search for it. Uh, what you'll then do is you'll click on this one here, which is organic keywords. You'll see the Canva. A ranking for 3.1 million uh, keywords. Now, what you're going to do then is you're going to um, look f- to position 10. So, what I'm telling Ahrefs is I only want to see, excuse me, sorry, keywords that are ranking from 1 to 10. Um, and then you can look by the volume then as well. So, depending on the size of the site, sorry, excuse me, depending on the size of the site, uh, you're going to want to look at different volumes. So, like, let's say, for example, here, um, I know that Canva has a lot of keywords. They've got 3.1 million keywords. Um, so in terms of search volume, I'm going to look for, I want I want Ahrefs to, t- to show me keywords that Canva rank for um, that have more than 500 searches a month, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll start to eyeball this and look at some of the, the URLs that are in the results here. So on this side, it'll show me the keywords. Here, it'll show me the URL. Here, it'll show me the positions, Okay. So I'm going to look and see if I notice any patterns here just by eyeballing it. So I can see here that they've got a folder for templates. They've got a folder for colors. Um, they've got a folder for create. They've got a folder for, let's see what else. So, yeah, they've got one for learn as well. So I get my notepad open. And I'll, I'll write down some of the ones that uh, make sense to me here, okay? So I've, I've already written down create templates and learn, okay? Um, so the templates is one that I've seen there a couple of times. So I want to learn a little bit more about what, what these templates are, what these pages are, okay? So I'm going to um, tell Ahrefs that I want to include keywords to do with templates. So what it's going to do then is going to show me the, the keywords that are, um, that are ranking for temp that their templates pages okay so i'm going to jump down a little bit deeper and see what's here so i can see that they've got this main page which is like an organizational page of templates and then i'm going to see that they've got specific ones then so resumes flyers certificates so this is something that i definitely want to look a little bit further into okay um what i'll also do as well at this stage is i'll usually look at the root um the root folder and i'll just look at the the level of traffic that this has so just to go back here right we had the organic keywords for canva being 3.1 million sorry their organic traffic is 23.7 million um that's to the entire site i want to know see what uh, kind of volume the template pages get specifically so i'll just open a separate tab so i see that canvas template pages actually contribute 1.5 1.5 million visitors to their traffic each month. And then when I go and look at the specific template pages, so uh, let me just go back into where I was. Then when I go back in here, I can see again the ones that are about templates. So I'll go and look at some of those guys, right? And when I look at it, I'll see that Canva are using this as a way to get people to sign up for their product. So they're using it like as a way to drive traffic to their site because I can see that it's ranking and I can see the positions that it's ranking for. But then when I get to the page, I can see actually, no, 
this this is a bottom of funnel page. So when people come here, they sign up. So when I click on that, it's going to know I've already signed into this, I think. So if I click use this template, and it was a user, probably would sign me up. And so now we've got a, I've got a user coming through. So like looking at that, I can see, okay, well, Canvas got this list of template pages, different types of pages. And when when I look at them, I can see their bottom of funnel pages, and I can see that they're driving traffic and, and most likely driving signups. Okay, so when I um, actually I better just quickly jump to see if there are any questions. Yeah, no questions. Cool. So I'll drive on. Um, Mijo, you got the, the so what I'll now do is I'll actually export this from Ahrefs. Okay, so I'm going to export. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a full export here because I want to see, I want to start looking at patterns. And what I'm going to do here in a second is I'm going to be able to find um, specific pages that are ranking for them, but also the keywords that they're they're ranking for. And then I can use this to build out like a content plan, okay? So I'll download this sheet. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of these two guys for our position history. So all I want to see really is the keyword. I want to see the position. I want to see the volume. And I want to see the URL that's ranking for it. And I want to see the difficulty of the specific keyword as well. I don't really care about any of the rest at this stage. No other, other points I might care, but at this stage, I don't, I don't care. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter. And then I'm going to, um, sorry, I wasn't, I shouldn't have filtered there. What I should have done was a uh, freeze it, freeze the top row. So I'm going to freeze the top row and then I'm going to uh, sort this from A to Z. So, um, I don't know why it's brought me in the, um, bear with me actually, sorry, I'm going to, that sheet exported some stuff that shouldn't be in there, so I'm just going to quickly do this again, bear with me. So again, get rid of these guys, um, and get rid of these, freeze that top row. And um, sort A to Z. So now what I have here, or what I should have, you know what? I actually do this normally in, in Google Sheets. And for whatever reason, it's not really working here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bring into the one that I did in Google Sheets. So what I did was I made this in case anything did go wrong. Um, so it's always good to have one you did earlier. But what happens in Google Sheets, at least, when I do this, um, I don't know what happened with the Excel. When I do those exact same steps, so I freeze the top row um, and then sort them by from A to Z. I can start to see pages and I can start to see the keywords that they rank for. So all, I, all I'll do here, for example, is I'll, I'll come in here and see this page on flyers ranks for a whole load of different keywords. Okay. So I'll then just start to um, add in some rows and I can, I can get some ideas there then. Okay. So like I'll separate them out. And when I look at this here, I can see that they've got this page here about YouTube channel art, and I can see all of the keywords that this this page ranks for. So now I've got you know a whole list of URLs that um, Canva ranks for. I've got a whole list of keywords that they rank for, and then specifically when I want to create my own ones, I know what keywords I need to include within those pages. So like when I go and look at um, the specific pages, I can see obviously and, and look at what their what their heading is what the text on there is any of the different things that are on there any of the different on page elements that are, are are there and that allows me then to create a brief for my own page so i know that i need to include the word channel art i know i need to include the word channel art template and so on and so forth within this text you know 
um specifically then as well so like that i've you know using this as an example remember i filtered for keywords that have volume of 500 or over but i could then come back and look at this specific one see all of the keywords that this one specifically ranks for as well you know so like again i'll just start i could start this from position one to ten and it, it just basically gives me a complete another plan to use when building this page so i know that if i if i build you know if i've got a graphic design software canvas my competitor i know that i need to create these template pages and i know that i need to create these templates within the product um and i know that for example Canva is driving, let's see, 16,000 visitors to their site with their version of this page. So if I create my version of this page, I've got the potential to drive the same amount of, 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 key, of visitors there as well. And like I said, I've got a blueprint laid out for me on what type of content needs to go on the page, you know, so... I can um I, I I can you know use the these as headings. I can I can build them in. I can use them within the paragraph content, and as well as that, I suppose specifically when we're talking about this as the example, I could probably optimize these images as well in the same way that we did previously, which would be another um you know ranking factor. Then if that all makes sense. Any questions? No, good. All right. So that's basically what you would do. You go through, you look at your competitor, you start to look for patterns, and then you look at specific ones um, that are in there. So, you know, like if I take this one as a separate example, um, I can take um, Canva again. And let me just open this. Hey, Miho. Yeah, man. We did have a little bit of clarification in the chat from William about his question. I think he's just. Cool. I think he's just simply asking um, for the. This is like going back to to when you were talking about the images. Um, I think he's just asking. You're not. You're boosting the blog post page, not any of the links to the actual photos. All the photos just live within that page. Yeah. Well, actually, what you can do, you could you could do some. Fo- uh, you can upload the same image to some photo sharing sites. So you could upload the image to the likes of Flickr and some of those other photo sharing sites. And some of them will allow you to link to a source. No, they might be like a no follow link, but they'll still allow you to link to a source. Um, and you can link back to the original page. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, you'd just be um, building links to the specific page. And that's that's what Google, so Google will then come on, crawl that page, crawl the images and understand what they're about. And then, pull them into the search results Mm -hmm. so you only have one page in there with those images yeah and you're just giving all the authority to that one blog post yeah exactly and it's all internal authority as well like so i'm I'm just linking to it internally from the header menu and from the footer Mm -hmm. awesome cool cool makes sense yeah yeah william let me know in the chat if that if that kind of clears that up but um yeah that's awesome michael thank you Cool. Um, so yeah, so like I, I just went through with um, Canva and how to find, I suppose, bottom of funnel pages. As, as you could see, you know, there was literally a ton of them there. Um, sorry, it was this sheet. You know, I could go through this sheet for hours and I'd literally have, you know, a couple of hundred new pages that I could create that could drive traffic to my site. Um, so let's say I wasn't looking to create bottom of funnel pages. I'd be, I was looking to create blog content, stuff like that. Um, I know that, you know, one of the other ones that I saw was Learn. So I've now filtered it for learn. Again, I can do the same steps. I can come in here and apply to position 10. I can go from volume 500 up. Um, If I wanted to as well, like let's say I had a a pretty new site that doesn't have a lot of authority in it yet. I could um, put a max limit on the keyword difficulty. So let's say I wanted to have keyword difficulty of up to 30. It would allow me to... um, see pieces of content that might not necessarily um you know be hard to rank and that might not necessarily need a lot of um links pointing to them you know so like i can see here again with canva i can export this and i can go through the same process and i'd be able to find pieces of content that they've created that i could then go and create my own version of um, and ideally create a better piece of content uh, a better version of and drive more links to it and outrank canva then um, so like this can be used across like pretty much a ton of different uh, niches, like whether it's national, international, whether it's a SaaS company, whatever it is. Um, for like more local companies, like let's say you had a plumbing company, you're probably going to 
be able to do this, but it won't work um, in terms of the volume of pages, you know. So you might find that there's 10 or 15 pages that could drive traffic to your site, but that might be all you need if you're, you know, if you're a plumber in Buffalo and you just want to rank in Buffalo, you know. Um, but obviously then, yeah, if you're like an international SaaS company and you want to uh, drive traffic from all over the world, uh, you're going to probably create a lot more pages and try, try and drive a lot more traffic to the site. Um so that is that portion, okay? So now I'm going to jump on to the content audit. Um, so content audit is, is a bit of a newer concept. And um, I suppose there's a lot of case studies out there. Well, actually, I'll just run through this, right? So there's a big myth in, in like, you know, there's a lot of um, crap that gets put out, basically. So, like, this is a big one. So Google loves fresh content. But, like, that's that's a lot of bollocks, basically. Like, it's it's, it's not true. If you if you Google pretty much any ter- term, you're not going to find a piece of content that was created yesterday uh, ranking on page one. The other side of it is, you know, people will say that Google loves fresh content and Google favors sites that create fresh content. Again, completely untrue. Just uh, SEO guru like you know myths and, and not true. So too many sites are being hampered by dead weight pages and um, with zero search value it dilutes your authority um so if you've got too many pages on your site it's going to dilute your authority dilute your page rank your link juice whatever you want to call it all of it's the same thing um there's a ton of great case studies on this so just google content audit case study. you see a lot of like bigger uh websites that have got great content marketing stuff like hubspot those kind of ones where they've done this process they've done content audits they've they've actually deleted pages off their site and they've seen the traffic grow um to to the other pages on the site so just to explain this a little bit further okay and i'm going to jump back into the presentation mode there um so to to simplify it right so part of google's algorithm is 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 page rank or what was page rank you know about 10 or 15 years ago so how google you know got so much better than all of the other search engines was partly due to page rank and what page rank was is is that google assigns a score or did assign a score from one from one to ten for each page um now that's changed over the years okay but like in general when you've got a website that has no links pointing to it versus a website that's got links pointing to it and quality links pointing to it the site with links is going to rank higher okay um and what part of this is how google transfers like uh, um i suppose authority from one page to the other so i've done a terrible paint drawing here but it it should hopefully help you understand right so let's say this was your website and this is external sites that are linking to your website and to, to simplify it if you had four links from four websites and each one of those websites had a score of one your score on this page your home page would be four now if you then linked internally to two other pages within the site that score of four is half between those two pages so it would be a score of two and two now if you've got four pages it's going to be quartered and you've got one and one and one and one and if it's going to be um eight pages it'll be 0.5.5.5.5.5 so the more pages that you've got in your site the more that you're diluting authority to um you know pages that you want to rank so if I bring it back here, again, whatever score is coming to the site from, from other websites, and let's say there was only two links from the home page to the other pages on the site, that would be a score of 2 to, to 4 to 0.5, right? So you're actually diluting the authority of each one of these pages each time you put a new page on there and Google crawls it. Um, so what happens, and bringing it back to the, um, the Google loves fresh content myth, like you know probably three or four years ago a lot of marketing managers and a lot of um people would have gone to conferences and there would have been seo gurus on there saying you need to create content google loves fresh content you need to create new content so you see in a lot of companies and they just started pumping and pumping and pumping old content you know um without any real purpose or clear goal or anything else in between so what happens is you get a lot of sites that are a few years old where they've got um you know possibly hundreds and hundreds of pages on their site but not all of those pages are actually driving any traffic to the website and the ones that aren't driving any traffic are taking away authority from any of the pages that are on that 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 are getting traffic you know um because that authority coming into the site is being diluted by those other pages um does that all make sense i wonder if there's any questions on this no it does not cool um so 
what you need to start thinking about and what you need to look at is, is doing a content all on your site. Now, obviously, if your site is only six months old, you mightn't be as much affected by this. But again, you might have you you might still be worth doing, you know. Um, so what you need to look at, right? You need to look at each specific page and look at the traffic that is on um or that has come to that page in the last 12 months. You need to look at the links pointing at the page. You need to look if there's any fall off in traffic. You need to look is at is the content on this page similar to any other content on the site. You need to look at is it better than, than what's currently ranking for the keywords. So in other words, if your page isn't ranking, um, go to the search results and look what is ranking and see, you know, can you say, oh, well, my piece of content is better than the one that's on there. You know, so you might go there, you might see that you've written a 400 word post um, in an hour and the top 10 results look like they took two weeks to put together and they're 2000 word mega posts you know then you know that that's what you need to do uh that's what you need to create that your 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 400 word post isn't going to work um you need to ask yourself could it be better optimized and you could ask you need to ask yourself does it need more links um so depending on the answers to these questions you're going to need to take some of these actions. So the one action would be to delete or 404 the post. So if you 404 the post, you can just trash it in WordPress, basically get rid of it off the site. Another thing that you can do is 410 it. And what the 410 is, is that you're basically telling Google that this, this page will never come back. 404, you're just deleting it. Um, so you can leave the page as is, depending on what that is on there. You can redirect the page to another page. You can um, archive the page, you can refresh the page, rewrite the page, merge the page, or um, decide to target the page with links. So an archive could be a good one if you've got a lot of content on your site that you don't necessarily want to delete or 301. It might be important content to you and your company, even though it's not driving um, any any actual new visitors to the site. So in this case, what you could do is create a new archive folder excuse me, move those pages over there, you can set all of the archive pages on the archive to no index. And you can also block anything to do with archive with the robots.txt. So basically, you're t by no indexing it, you're telling Google, I don't want you to index this. Don't, it's not valuable. Excuse me. And then by blocking it with the robots.txt, you're telling Google, don't even bother crawling it, right? A refresh would be in the case where you've got a good enough piece of content, but it just needs a few small tweaks. So let's say like, no, it's, it's, you know, it's March 2020 and you go and look at your piece of content and it's the ultimate guide to do the ultimate guide to do X, Y, Z in 2018, you know? So that would be one that could get traffic again, but small tweaks such as change it to the ultimate guide to do X, Y, Z in 2020 um, and stuff like that, you know? Rewriting a post would be in the example where I said that you've got a 400 word post and all of the ones that are ranking are 2,000 word mega posts. So then you'd go back and look and say, well, actually, what do I need to put on this page? Go and spend more time, add more content to it. Or maybe you might go and look at the search results and see that you've got the content type wrong. So like, um, let's say, for example, bear with me. Let's say my, my, me or my client wanted to rank for internal communications plan, right? I would go and look here and I would pretty much see that what people are looking for is how to create an internal communications plan. So like you can see here, most of the titles here are how to create an internal communications plan, 11 steps to create your internal communications strategy, those kind of things, right? But if I had completely missed the point with my internal, with my piece of content for internal communications, so maybe I wrote something that's completely off the wall, like, um, I don't know. Shit, I can't think of a, of a bad example. Um, but like, you know, I wrote something that just wasn't what people are looking for. I could look at this and I could see, oh, well, actually, I got this wrong. Um, I I instead need to go back to the drawing board and completely change this to be about internal communications planning and how someone can. It needs to be a piece of content that explains someone explains to someone how to do uh, an internal communications plan. That would be where you rewrite, merge. So again, with a lot of older sites, you see that there's a lot of. Um, I suppose, p pages on the site that are similar. And you could look to see, well, actually, I've got these three pieces of content. They're all on the same subject. Could I merge all three of these into one piece of content that, that became a, mega piece, a piece of mega content? Um, again, that would be what you do. And then finally, you would look at, do I need to build more links to this piece of content? So have I got everything else right? Is, is the on page right? Is um, everything else in between right? But it just doesn't have enough authority. In that case, I'd build links. So 
I've got a sheet here um, that I'm going to show you guys. So this is a sheet that I've done for one of my clients. Now, obviously, I've, I've had to delete anything that's kind of um, personal data. So I've had to delete the URLs. I've had to delete the titles and meta titles, right? But going through this, I've pulled off a list of about 300 posts. I think it's about 300 anyway. Um, and then I've assigned a specific action to each one of them um and i've explained the why as well so for example here like there's a you'll see here there's a lot that are four or fouring so in my excel sheet here i can see the number of sessions and usually as a general rule no it will depend on the type of site that you're that you've got you know if you're a small local site and you get two thousand visitors a month then a page that gets 100 visits in the last year might be good but like for the most part any any page on your site that's getting less than 100 visits a year or less than 100 visits in the last 12 months probably isn't very valuable you know so like these ones here i can see um you know they've had less than 100 sessions in the last 12 months um and i can also see some of the other stats in as well so the reason why this one is a 301 and the reason why these are 404 so these are 404s and they've got no links pointing to them so if i was to delete these or sorry if i was to delete this one it's got 13 links pointing to it um, I'd lose those link. I'd lose the authority that's being driven to my site by those links. So that's why instead I've decided to trio one this. So when I trio one this site or this page, what I'm doing is I'm I'm telling Google this page doesn't exist anymore, but this page is instead is is a much better page to go to now. So I'm transferring the authority of these 13 links to the other page. You know, so obviously you know in a real life example, I'll, I'll have the the old URL and, and where it should be trio one redirected to. You know um i'll just show you a couple of other ones there as well so sometimes you might just leave as is because they might have great traffic they might have you know they might be ranking position three they might have a lot of links there's nothing you need to really do to it you know some cases then like i said you might need to refresh so um in the case of refreshing i might look and see that there's high impressions but not a lot of clicks that might suggest that i've got the piece of content wrong um again it might be that my piece of content says um you know something to do in 2018 whereas now it's 2020 rewrite again like i said it might be so you can see here like i've got a, this one is a couple of links but it had very thin content um so a rewrite with a bit more focus could help you know and um, so i'll go through each page look at them look at the stats for them so i i have you know i'll have pulled these from a, a number of different sources so i've data here from google analytics i've got data from uh, SEM rush. I've got data from Ahrefs to see, you know, does this page rank for any um, keywords? Like just this one as an example, I can see that it's it's ranking for the keyword high growth companies. Um, that's the volume of it. That's where it's ranking, and I can see then as well that it got, you know, just over 100 visits in the last 12 months. So that that's one that I'm going to leave as is. You don't have to uh, pull these on in, onto a sheet. Um, sorry, my nose is so itchy. Um, you don't have to pull them all onto a sheet. What you can do is just look at the specific sources as well. Like, so you could just have your Excel sheet with the URL, the final URL and your decision, and then just go from, you know, go from here to analytics, go from here to Ahrefs, go from here to SEMrush. But um, just this sheet is something that allows me to do everything, kind of look at it in one one place, basically, um, which is pretty handy. Um but that's pretty much it with the content all. So like I said, you don't need to just create new content for the sake of it. You know, you, you need to be looking at, especially when you've created content, you've created a, a content in the last couple of years, you need to be looking at what is that content doing for me? And if it's not doing anything for you, you need to look at either deleting it, redirecting it, refreshing it, rewriting it, or driving links to it, um, or just, you know, leave it as, but you need to look at these things because you can you you know with these things you can spot stuff there for example you might see a keyword that's constantly in position 12 for a really high volume keyword and you might go back and then look at it and see well actually if i make a couple of on-page optimizations it might push it up and then if i drive a couple of links to it that'll probably push me into the first page and again you can just see those things and and actually go and do them with the content audit you know so that's that part of it so now what i'm going to talk about is um link building so I've mentioned it a couple of times about authority and stuff like that, but for the most part, and this is like something that's like often debated in like SEO communities and excuse me, there's often, um, you know, very heated debates in some of the communities that I'm in um, about whether it's possible to rank without links or not. But like the general consensus and for the most part is that it's really hard to rank without links, especially if you're in, in a niche that's anyway competitive. Now, again, like I said, 
if you're a plumber in a small town, it's probably going to be okay and you're probably going to be able to rank for, you know, um, plumber, back or tone or whatever, like, you know, but like if you're in a bigger city like New York, you're not going to be ranking for, for, for that kind of keywords if you don't have links pointing at your website because the links are um, what gives you authority, okay? Um, unfortunately, it's not 2008, so you can't just spam 10,000 links to land on page one. Um, you shouldn't just publish in praise, you should actively be linked. So a lot of the time you'll see uh, companies will put a, a huge amount of resources and time into creating amazing content, um, but then that's all they'll do, they'll stop. So they won't actively promote it and they'll, they'll be like, oh no, my content's great, it's going to get links itself naturally. Um, you need to actively promote your content. So the other thing is you shouldn't build um, you shouldn't build any type of links. You shouldn't just be like trying to spam it or whatever. You, you need to build them the right way. I'm just going to jump back to see if there's any questions. Okay. Let's go back here. Okay. I think they're covered, are they? What I might do, Matt, we can chat about it afterwards there in a sec, um, and I'll carry on, right? So with the external links, um, you're going to need, or when you build the external links, you're going to start seeing results. So these are, this is the site that I worked on, okay? So you'll see here, the, the stat here in this graph is the number of referring domains. So in other words, the number of websites that are linking to, to my client's site. So you see the site starts in 2017. It doesn't have a lot of links. And then the referring domains start to go up. And in in right exactly with this, you'll start to see that their organic traffic moves pretty much in the same direction. So you can see their organic traffic is very flat. And then it just starts to grow and grow and grow and grow to where they're at a point now where they're hitting over 200K a month. Um that was in the space of about 18 months as well. So that was around 4,000 visits to, you know, 200 and something within within 18 months from specifically from building links. Um, I know, no, I'm not really, I, I probably should be in presentation mode to show that a little bit better, but I think you can see it anyway. Um, so here, what I'm going to do is um, show you how I reverse engineer competitors for link ideas. So again, this will work really well if you're a smaller player and you've got a lot of competitors that are doing well or probably a lot are well better known. So in this case, again, I'm just going to use Canva cause, just because I'm so familiar with them. Um, and just because I know that they've got a lot of stuff to, to reverse engineer. So uh, what I'll do is I'll come back to my trusty tool Ahrefs and I will um, look for Canva I'll go back to the overview or I could have just went here to referring domains um, so I'll click on referring domains bear with me it's a little bit slow I'll sort them by the DR so DR is just a, a stat that Ahrefs have created to kind of mimic like page rank and stuff like that uh, I'm going to go here, link type do follow. And then what I'm going to do is I want to start looking for patterns. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the second page here, just going to know that there, there's a couple of ones that will team me up nicely. Okay. Um, but what I will do, right, is I look specifically for um, this one here where it says links to target. So the ones where it says like a big number, I'll probably ignore those for a minute and I'll look at the ones that have like a smaller number, like a one, two, and three, okay? Um, and I'll usually just go through these guys and see what kind of, um, I can see what kind of content is, is linking to my competitor. So really quickly looking at this, right? I can see this one and it stands out to me. So this this post from, from live chatting is a really high authority site. So 11 smart marketing tools to make your work easier. So I'm gonna go and look at this, right? And I'll see that live chatting have created this piece of content about 11 smart marketing tools to make your work easier. And when I go and look at it further, I'll see this is actually a list post of, you know, other marketing tools. So again, let, let's say that my my product was a competitor to Canva um, and I wanted to build the traffic on that. What I would do is I'd reverse engineer these types of links and I, I'd go through their entire link profile and start to look for opportunities like this one specifically. So, um, you know, list posts, for example. So like these type of posts where they might say the top, X amount of marketing tools, they might say the top X amount of graphic design tools, whatever. 
and I'll go and I'll look and I'll find those guys. And I like basically how I do this is I, I have a team uh, a team in the Philippines that go and does this for me. So their job full time is to go and do this research. And then what they'll do is they'll go and look, they'll find the author, they'll find the author's name, they'll find the author's email address, and they'll record all of those things for me, right? So then what I'll do is I'll reach out to this person, I'll reach out to Cassie and I'll say, hey, Cassia, you know, I came across your post about uh, 11 smart marketing tools. Notice that you mentioned Canva in there. Have you ever heard about my product? It does X, Y, Z and it does ABC better than Canva. Would you consider adding it into the post? I'd be happy to, you know, show you uh, show you how the product works. Um, I'd be happy to show you why, why it deserves to be in this spot, you know, and like, when you start to go through these, now obviously I'm doing it very quickly, but when, when you start to go through these guys, um, you'll start to see lots of different patterns and different types of um, ways you can reach out to different websites. Like So like I would go through each one of these um, and I'd look specifically for those, you know, those types of posts or, or is there other types of posts in there? Like, so let's just see what else is here. Um Bear with me. Couple of weird ones. Here's another one. Three easy visual content marketing taxes your business needs. Um, so then the previous version was the list post. When I'm looking at this, I see that this is one that kind of mentions my competitor, you know. So it doesn't necessarily it's not a it's not a list of specific tools. It's it's talk about visual content marketing tactics. And then within that it's it it mentions, you know. Like I'd be willing to guess just based on what the content says here. That's probably saying, you know, you should create invest in creating visual content. If you can't, then you can use something like Canva to to create, you know, um to create content cheaply or whatever. You can hire a graphic designer. Um what you can do is to use this for as well, which is or like, you know, a tactic like this. So previously we had reverse engineered Canva for their for their blog content. Um so let's say I've got a list of um um blog posts that I have written. Or let's say I've got a specific blog. So I've gone through the process, right? And I've I've looked and I've seen, you know, hey, this piece of content has got a low difficulty. Well, let's take this one as an example, right? So Canvas blog about pastel colors has got, you know, 40,000 a month people people search for it. The difficulty is eight. They're ranking fifth for it. Um and it's driving a ton of different, it's driving a ton of traffic to them, right? So I might then say, well, actually, I'm going to create a piece of content that's 50 examples of pastel colors. And I might have written that blog and now I want to promote it. So what I can do is I can come in and look at this specific piece of content and I can reverse engineer the links that are pointing to Canva. So now with my piece of content, I can reach out to the people that have linked to Canva and I can say, hey, I can I see you've, you know, you you liked Canvas piece about um pastel colors. Have you seen my one? It's you know, it's, there's a thousand more words there, or there's you know, an extra fifty or there's an extra twenty colors. My one has got fifty. Um so now I can see that they've got twenty three referring domains. I can find the people that have linked to the Canva one and reach out specifically to those guys and say, Hey, why don't you link to my piece of content as well or instead or whatever, you know? Um the other way that you can do it so like Canvas piece of content is probably ranking here for pastel colors so what i can do here as well is i can go into the keywords explorer and i can look at all of the pieces of content that are ranking on page one and i can look at all of the people that are linking to them and find them so these are the results on page one i can see all of the the websites that are linking to those results i can get my i can you know depending on the size of your team you know if you're small and you need to do it yourself that's fine but you could individually look at all of these links that are pointing to these websites. Excuse me. Go and look at them. See are they an opportunity. Find the author. Reach out to the author and say, hey, why don't you link to my post as well or instead or whatever. And, you know, if I wanted to go a little bit further as well, I could go down past the top 10. Um, so that's a, a really quick way of getting links to your site because you know that these people are already interested in pastel colors because they've already linked to another website from your website. Um to a piece of content that was talking about pastel colors. Uh, let's just see any questions on that. That's the, um, 
That's yours, John. So there's no other questions, which is fine. I do just want to say this is, um, Michal, this is like fantastic. I feel like this is um, the same type of consulting that would cost like literally thousands and thousands of dollars. This is probably one of the um, most jam-packed masterclasses we've held in quite a while as far as content goes. So thank you so much. No worries. Um, so, yeah, so that's the external links the ways you can build links externally notice a lot more but they're just kind of low-hanging fruit ones um one thing that's uh, often very important is internal links so links from pages on or you know one page on your website to another page um they're a hidden weapon in the fight to rank um often overlooked can be used to push authority and page rank link juice whatever to a page and can be used to help google better understand what a page is about okay so i'll just present this okay just to explain so one strategy that works very well, if you want to if you want to rank a product page on Google, for example, it can often be very hard to do that because it, it can often be very hard to naturally gain a link directly to a product page because you know like it's probably going to look spammy. If someone's writing a blog, they're not they're probably not going to say go here to this product page to buy this um, because like you know it, it's probably just not going to happen. So they can stick out like a sore thumb. Um, but one tactic that's really, really good and really, really, um, it works. It's really, really good to use is to drive authority to a page from other internal pages on your website. So let's say you know I had a piece of content, or no, I had a product page. Let's bring it back to like Nike Air Max trainers. Um, I have a product page of Nike Air Max trainers. I could go and create pieces of content to both Nike Air Max trainers. So it might be how to lace. Uh, sorry, let me bring it back how to lace your Nike Air Max trainers, how to keep your Nike Air Max trainers trainers clean, how to pick the best pair of Nike Air Max trainers, and how to, I don't know, something else about Nike Air Max trainers, right? And I can go and fairly naturally build links to these pieces of content because people are much, like, you know, if it's about how, you know, how to keep your Nike Air Max trainers really clean. If you reach out to sneakerhead websites about a post like that and the post is really good and really useful, they're going to want to link to it because it, it makes sense, you know. So you can drive links to your blog posts from external sites that will drive authority to those pieces of, of content and they might actually rank those pieces of content as well. But what you can then do is within those pieces of content, you can link internally to your product page. So all of these links point to these blog posts and these internal links point to the main product page can drive all of this authority down here to this page and push this page in the rankings. And because like Google will look at um, the links that are pointing to a page regardless of whether they're, they're external or internal. And what you can do is like, you know, part of some of the... Um, part of some of the updates that have come from Google have been around people over optimizing anchor text. So like one of the ways that Google understands what a page is about is by the text that's, that's, that's used to link to it, you know? So like if you're, yeah, if you're, if your product was Canva and you were linking to Canva and always using the anchor text graphic design tool and Google understands that, that, that Canva is a graphic design tool, but like, for the most part, um, people figure this out and they started doing it heavily. And then Google was starting to get spammed and they came up with an algorithm update that punished people that did this, you know. So the way that that worked was if you were doing it from an external site. But on, on your own site, on an internal site, you're kind of, you know, in, almost encouraged to do that. So when you're linking to a page on an, you know, an internal page on your website from another page on your website, you're encouraged to use the anchor text to help Google understand what it's about. So, you know, oftentimes you'll see in a product, um, let's say like, you know, you've got a list of, um, you've got a list of services. So let's say you're a plumber and you've got, I don't know, toilet unblocking, um, radiator repair, and whatever else, right? So you've got a specific page for services, and that page links out to other ones in, like I said, toilet unblocking, radiator repair, whatever else in between. If you were linking to those pages with a button that said learn more, you're basically telling Google that what those pages are is learn more. Whereas if you were linking with, with you know, the anchor text, um, you know, toilet unblocking, radiator repair, then you're actually telling Google what that page is about. So you can use your anchor text on your on your internal site to, to help Google understand what a page is about, okay? So one of the ways to go through and actually get, um, you know, to find opportunities for internal linking is to use this search. So you'll go site, your site, plus your keyword. So 
when we were going through this earlier, um, one of the pages that, uh, or one of the URLs for Canva that came up was um, this one here, YouTube channel art, okay? So like they've got this page, it's, you know, ranking for all these different keywords. But let's say I want to find other um, pages on Canva's site that I can use to internally link to this and drive more authority to the site and add more relevancy and help Google understand better understand what it's about. Um, so what I will do is I'll go site and then I'll put in uh, the word YouTube. So then what I'm basically telling Google here is I'm saying, hey, Google, show me all the webs or all the web pages on canva.com that have the word YouTube in them, okay? And then I'll see um, all of these pages here. But um, one of the things that I noticed earlier on Canva is that they've got a couple of different folders. So they've got forward slash templates, which is their template pages. Uh, they've got forward slash learn, which seems to be their blog, right? So I, you know, using the example that I just gave here where I'm driving, you know, authority from a from a, a blog post to a product page, if I was to do that, I'll know that um, Canvas blog is forward slash learn. So now what I'll do, I'm going to do is I'm saying to Google, hey, Google, tell me any pages on the site that are from canva.com forward slash learn that have the word YouTube in them. So now I've got this full list of um, of blogs on the Canvas site that mention the word YouTube. And then I can go through all of these and I can find opportunities where, where the word YouTube is mentioned where it makes sense to to link back internally to my my YouTube channel art page, which was the one uh, you know, which is the one I want to actually drive more traffic to because when people come in here, they'll actually sign up for um they'll actually sign up for the product. So like coming down here, I'll come in and I'll just do look at this. I'll see it's about this. Um and they've got some some stuff linking out to other websites. And, you know, I'd probably guess that they probably have some stuff in there, but like here would be a perfect example and that they've probably actually missed unless they've done it somewhere else. Um, but they've got this piece of text in the paragraph. They usually include the title of the YouTube channel. So that would be a perfect opportunity for me to add a hyperlink here from this anchor text back to my YouTube channel art page. And so you just, you pretty much rinse and repeat with all of these, um, with all of these, you go through, you're looking to find page on your site that talk about something that's relevant and you're trying to identify where, you know, can I, can I drive more authority to a specific page and, and, you know, can I use the anchor text to help Google understand what, what that page is about and what the relevancy of that page is. Um, maybe there must be questions. Nope. Good. Um, and that is pretty much it. So if you want to add me on LinkedIn, this is my LinkedIn. Um, obviously, you can just search for my name as well. That's the website there, smbclicks.com. What I thought might be cool as well was if there's anyone on the call um, that has maybe got a bigger competitor um, that would be like well-known, maybe we could quickly go through some of the steps that I've done here to see if we can get some like content ideas and stuff for you. And you know? also... If you want to jump in on the Q and A there and um, ping me a message, let's let's have a look. Just send me the name of your competitor, and we can have a look there. If you're there, if you're listening, <laughs> we've got the. Uh... let's have a look not trying to rank it but let's see if we can use it for um for content ideas just to bring it back here yeah you said i answered it so like um a couple of different things you can do to come back to your question matt so are you able to ask google to ignore certain pages so yeah you can know index them you can you know like you can tell them not your next page if there's um you know if there's a whole bunch of them you can block them in the robots.txt and then some so just with this one here you're saying we have a number of very similar pages for related but different products if they were what, what you could do as well would be like um adding a canonical and like a canonical tag so let's say you've you've got the one main page but you've got three or four other ones that are similar uh, or maybe take content from it you could add the canonical tag to the, th the other three or four 
and point them back to the main page. You're kind of it's like a soft way of saying to Google, this is the page to look at, you know. So what's the uh, what's the government page, Matt? Yeah, I'm just sending that through. Cool. I can find where I'm trying to find where this uh, session is <laughs> in all my tabs. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. Real, real time workshop right now. That's awesome. <clears throat> Did that come through okay? Political counselor is our site on the tree and rank for legalized documents against gov.com. Maybe be a little bit too specific, but let's see. <clears throat> so that's one specific page, Matt, is it? Um, well, no, sorry, the, the Vital Consular is just our site. Um, so, but is, is the gov.uk, is that a spe one specific piece of content about yeah, getting it yeah, it is, It's like a, a particular sort of department within the British government. Okay. But if you if you do a, a search for legalized documents in Google, you'll see that the second result is something called apostille.org.uk and they would be a competitor. So it's them that we really would want to try and get. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, okay. We I'll are one go... further down. got a lot of traffic as that yeah so these guys are the competitors right they would they would be one of our main competitors yeah cool so let's use them um so obviously some of this you've probably already gone through right but let's just for argument's sake see if anything else pops up you can probably guarantee we haven't gone through any of it as yet so oh really okay yeah. fair enough <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so the four and a half thousand keywords or four thousand two hundred keywords. So again, no, you could just you could you could reverse engineer the domains, but let's have a look here at the keywords. It's gone a little bit slow for me. Bear with me. All right, just because the um, there's not a lot. Of a search volume in this, right? I might just. No, it's quite a niche industry. Yeah, no, there's some good stuff here, though. So let's have a look here, right? So I'm going to export this. And this time I'll do it in Google Sheets because Excel let me down the last time. <laughs> um, I'll just create a new one here lad, and I'll send this to you afterwards. Thank you. No, like if that was a bigger site, I would have looked for the specific things, but in this case, I'm not going to bother. So, like, remember, I went through and I looked for like learn and template and, and that, but like that's because there was a few thousand keywords. Whereas in this case, um, you know, like there's whatever 489, yeah. um, and it looks like they haven't got a lot. Of, like, so Canva was a good example because they had a lot of different folders, like templates and stuff like that, but these guys seem to have a lot less folders, so it'll just be easier to do it here anyway. Um, right. So I'm just going to get rid of the position history. And I'm going to get rid of all these guys. And no, I'm just going to sort this from A to Z. All right, so let's forget about their homepage, okay? But what else have they got? All right, so... So what I'm looking for here now is to try and see if there's, like, patterns on specific ones. Okay, so this might be a really good one, actually. Uh, they've got an FAQ page for birth certificates. So now I've got, like, a kind of a keyword grouping here. Can see what their page is and i can see what what it's ranking for so if I, i'll go and look at this one
so that's their specific page and what's your site again well it was um a vital culture level so what i'll do hopefully won't embarrass you here no but let's you know, so. no yeah might embarrass me whatever happens you got a birth certificate page no probably not we have another we have a separate site oh, we oh we have another yeah we have another station yeah so okay so for that part there you're, you're spot on right um and you've got you've got your own ver, ver, sorry i just clicked out of it there somehow but like yeah you've got your birth certificate page so you could come back and look through this but like you might sorry i'll do that again uh, let's just open that up i kind of clicked on that by accident so your page here right you can see your your headline is birth certificates mm -hmm. um all right so that's your head one grand you've got about how many words on the page not enough 160 <laughs> let's see what these guys have no i probably need to open these yeah, but like basically right, the way that they've broke it down here, so they've got the headline here, they've got an extra heading, but it looks at things with the with that in there, and then they've got some FAQs on there. Yeah. So like an idea for you now might be to add a, an FAQ section onto the page. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um some other ones here. Let's just have a quick look. Me, me so, then, sorry, they've got yeah. Me. Yeah. Hey, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um I have to go to sleep, but you guys can continue. <laughs> On your tables? No, 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 don't, don't worry about it. I just want to stop the recording so I can give it to Nick. You know what I mean? Since this is like a more of a one-on-one -on -one thing, I'm going to stop the presentation and then you guys can continue your one-on-one -on -one conversation. Is that is that okay? Cool. Totally, yeah. That's great, but I'm going to oh, stop yeah, it right now. We're not going to...